When you talk about an olive tree, all of a sudden there are images of old gnarled trees with beautiful silver leaves and you are spot on. There are over 500 varieties of olive trees that are available around the world. Most of them are cultivated specifically for certain reasons. And you might think, well, isn't it just for olives? Well, yes it is, but some olive trees, some specifics, are grown for different reasons. Some are just for their oil for cooking, others are for their wood, would you believe it or not, and others are for the oil to use in machinery and lubricants. Now this is called the Mission Olive. Mission Olive is one of the most popular olives available in South Africa and anywhere in the Southern Hemisphere. And can you believe it? Within three to four years, it produces olives that are green. So this is your typical green. And it's not a fruit. Actually, it's called a droop. Are olives edible off the tree? Don't do that. Green olives picked off a tree have got a compound naturally found in them, which is just bitter, tart, terrible, and it'll put you off eating olives for the rest of your life, which is why they, the olives that we generally enjoy have gone through a process of fermentation, either in brine or in oil, and various processes in order to make them edible, because that's when this compound gets broken down. This little guy over here, the Mission Olive, flowers and produces fruit during the summer months. And it's important to understand that because that's going to determine when we need to prune it. And pruning generally happens as your rule of thumb after fruiting because olives only produce fruit on last year's hard wood. Ha! Huh? So if you pruned in winter, like when you're pruning your, your fruit trees, which are deciduous, well, you're going to be pruning all, all the flower buds away. And if you prune the flower buds away, you're not going to get any fruit. So bear that in mind. Really, really important. Now, previously, it was said that you had to have two. You know, you had to have two olive trees. Well, guys, that is not necessary these days. Because Mission is what we call a self-pollinating or a self-fertilizing variety. So you only have to one have to have one plant in order for the little flowers to pollinate each other to be able to end up with fruit. You can also plant them right next to your swimming pool. Why? Well, because they've got a very surface root system. Because if we think about where they originated from, where it's hot and dry and very little rain, they have the surface root system so that when it did rain, those little roots are quickly able to absorb the little bit of moisture that is there. However, Olives hate to have wet feet, just like us. They hate damp feet. If you've got an area of poor drainage, guys, I really advise that you put a layer of river sand, thick layer at the bottom of the hole, because what that is gonna do is ensure that your beautiful olive never has to sit in wet soil with wet feet. Then what I want you to do is just add in some ordinary compost. And this is the optional part but I do suggest that you go with it. Add a handful of 232, a handful of bone meal or superphosphate just to get it going. It's important as well that you do give it a very, very good watering after you've planted it. So a thorough watering once a week. Thereafter, you can start weaning it off, generally after its second year, and even after three or four months, if we go into our rainy season, you can obviously then back off on your watering. In order for olive trees to have this beautiful gray foliage, it's important that they are in only full day sun. And it's really critical about this. When we talk about full day sun in gardening terms, we also talk about minimum of five hours sunlight. So a full day sun can also be five hours of direct sunlight. And the other important thing to understand is that olive trees are evergreen. That means they have leaves on them all year round. However, just as we go into early spring, you will find that they have a shake, all right? They literally have a shake and a lot of leaves fall off. And that is to make way for the new set of foliage that's going to be pushing through. Olive trees are perfect for containers. When choosing the container for your olive tree, always choose something that is at least one or two sizes up from its original pot that you've bought it in. Why? 
because then at least you know that for the next two years, this guy's gonna be really happy in this container. The medium I'm using, which I've prepared, is using Garden Masters Premium Potting Soil. And this is important because it's got nutrition in here, it's got a bit of worm castings, it's got good drainage. But because we know that olives need extra good drainage, because they hate wet feet, I've added in some river sand. In terms of, of volumes and proportions, one part river sand to five parts premium potting soil. And finally, I've added a handful of 232 fertilizer, which is gonna encourage good rooting. You could also substitute that for an organic pelletilized fertilizer, which will do the same thing. Right, in my container, remember, it always needs good drainage. There we go, drainage holes there. I'm taking a little bit of shade cloth, a little piece that I've cut, which is gonna go over these drainage holes, but still allow water to push through. But what it's going to stop is the soil falling out through the holes. So next up is I'm gonna add in some of my beautiful mixture. In it goes into the container. Now as a general rule guys, you never want to bury this little guy any much deeper than it is here. Olive trees can be susceptible to collar rot. So when we get this guy out, remember it's a squeeze, it's a squeeze, it's a squeeze. Grab it over there, all right? Finger around it, fingers around it, still holding the soil over there and turn it upside down. And hey presto, out it comes. Nice and simple. Then we're gonna take this little boy, pop him in here. Oh, lovely. Now you might say, but Tanya, that's quite deep. Yes, it might look deep, but remember, we're only gonna fill the soil to here. We're always gonna leave some space. Very important that there always is space over here so that when you water it, the water actually stays in here and goes in and doesn't bubble over and go outside the pot. And you see it's got lots of space here to put on growth. Really nice space. Firm it down. Take the back end of your trowel to do that as well. Now to finish this baby off. Yeah, it looks great like that, but mulching is important and I don't want you to use the wrong mulch. When it comes to olive trees, please guys, use only the following when it comes to mulching. Here's some beautiful black decorative pebbles. You can certainly use these around your pots or even in your olive trees that are planted in the garden. The other option is to use your cheapest, simplest gravel. Now, I really like this look and that's why I'm gonna take this beautiful gravel and just pop it around just like that. Perfect. The only other mulch that you can use around your olive tree is either pine bark chips, which are known as a decorative mulch, or macadamia shells. Do not use compost from your compost heap or even compost that you purchase from your local builders or even lawn clippings or leaf mold. Please, none of that should be used because if you place it around the plant, it traps in too much moisture and that is going to give it you got it, wet feet. The other thing is, if you are using any of those and you put them too close to the stem, you're gonna end up with what we call stem rot. And either of those are not good. In terms of maintenance of this little guy now, we've potted it, we've given it some plant food, a very thorough watering once we have completed this. And then I would recommend that from now until infinitum, that you use a liquid plant food, whatever your choice, to give it that extra bit of nutrition and a good feeding of either a chemical fertilizer, which is slow release, or an organic fertilizer seasonally. And that will be enough to keep this guy going in the pots as well as those in the garden. Now let's get down to pruning. There are different ways that we can do this. And this little guy has been pruned to form what we call the average lollipop. Now we can certainly leave this and let it become a bit more looser. And I would encourage you to do that, especially if we're wanting to get some fruit out of it. And there are a couple of things that we need to know. And in order to show you what I'm talking about, I wanna to go to this guy over here. Now this olive tree is about four years old. It's been in the container. It's doing incredibly well. But there are a couple of things that it needs. And it needs number one, pruning, which is very important. And it also needs staking. So let's take a look at this guy. So there's a bamboo stake in here, which is not really doing its job. So what I'm gonna do is simply just get this guy out of here. Ah, there we go. Now, ultimately, he needs to bend slightly that way. 
In goes the stake alongside the plant. Don't go too close. And I would recommend probably about two centimeters away from the actual stem of the tree. Now in terms of stake options or choices that you have, you can go with a bamboo stake, you can get metal stakes, you can get wooden stakes, and it really doesn't matter. Just make sure that you put it in properly. Once your stake is in and you're comfortable that it's nice and secure, it's then time to start the tying. Guys, there are various options available at your local builders from tying straps um, to some budding tape. And I want to show you what happens if you don't tie your tree properly. Can you see that there? That is from the tree rubbing against your stake that was put right up against it. And unfortunately on bark, you never get rid of that scar. So the way that we do it, it's called a figure of eight. And this is really important and you can use this for when you're staking and tying anything in the garden. And this is how we do it. We're gonna pop it around the back, okay? We're gonna bring it in, all right? Bring it in, bring it in. We cross it over, that's it. And then we bring it back right up to our stake. There's our figure of eight all the way around. And then we just tie it up. And what I like about the budding tape and even with our straps like this, is that they stretch as the plant is growing. So you're never going to damage it. Why the figure of eight? Because this stem will never now rub against because it's got to get through the eight. So let's continue doing that up the tree. Right, now that we've staked it, it comes down to pruning. Pruning and shaping is really important. And remember, the only rule that I've given you is don't prune it in winter. So there's a very quick way to remember the pruning of an olive tree. It's called us, I see you. And it's the following, I is inwards, any branches that are facing inwards. C is for any branches that are crossing. And the U is for branches that are going upwards, too high. But before we get to us, I wanna prune away these lower branches just so that I can open up this beautiful stem. And there we have it. Okay, so bottom is opened, nice and beautiful. You can actually see the tree. Now we go to the ice. Anything that is facing inwards. So that's what you're gonna follow, very, very simply. The next one is C, anything that's crossing. This guy is crossing over this one. So we're gonna remove it. Ah, this one could potentially cause some tr trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it. So what you're wanting is an open vase shape. And that is a general rule for most of your fruit trees, that the more light you get in will eventually produce more leaves and that in turn produces more fruit. Plus you can maintain and control the shape. The next thing is the U, upwards. So we don't want it too tall and lanky because remember when we control the top growth, what we do is we force the plant hormones down into the tree and outwards. Ha, ah, yes, here we get a bushier, thicker, more beautiful tree. And folks, that is the opening, that is the ice, what we call it, of pruning your tree. You're probably going to, only gonna to have to do this once a year. What about problems? What can go wrong in an olive tree? Besides the fact that you haven't given it enough water because you think it can sustain itself on its own, or too much water, the only real pest and disease that you would get would be ants, crawling up the stems. If you see ants crawling up and down the stem, you generally will find and know that you have scale. If you find that you have got any scaly diseases on your olive tree, I recommend you just use something like oleum, which smothers them and will get rid of them in no time at all. Now remember folks, everything that I've used is either available in store or online. Visit the blog, and check out the website for great ideas extensive and informative articles and how-to videos. And you can get a tree that's not only a tree, but also produces fruit. Get to builders and get it done.